People will forget all about what happened on The Bachelor soon enough. Until, until then, Lauren, I'm like the worst villain in reality television history. I mean, it's bad. You know, they even tried to ban me from Minnesota because I broke up with Becca and she's from there. Oh, it'll blow over soon enough. You'll see. Oh, sorry, hang on one sec. Hello? Hello, Mr. Lundyke. This is Mary Ann from Visa Card Services. Do you have a minute? Sure. We saw that you canceled your account with Visa today, and we just wanted to know why you decided to close that account. Oh, God. Um, well, first, let me just say it's not you. <laughs> Visa has been really, really fantastic. It's just ever since I was on The Bachelor, I've been getting a lot of attention from other companies, and, well, there's really no easy way to say this, but, uh, Let's just say Discover Card was very aggressive about me taking my business with, to them. You understand, don't you? Sure. Now, what would you say if I could offer you a lower annual percentage rate? No, 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 don't do that. You don't have to cheapen yourself to try to keep me. Your visa is great just the way it is. Look, this is just the way it worked out. It's really, it's the best for everyone. Okay? Let's just leave it at that. Okay, well, uh, if you change your mind, we can, uh, Who is that? Her. I am so sorry about that. It's nobody important. Hey, babe, let's get the check and get out of here. Yeah, sure. Hi. Yes. Can we pay for our meal? Oh, of course. All right. I hope you enjoyed your dinner today. It was delicious, thank Beautiful. you. This is a tight suit. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, sir, I'm sorry, but this restaurant doesn't take Discover Card. Oh, okay. Uh, hang on just one minute. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. I'll give you a moment. I'll be back. Appreciate it. Just one more. Visa Card Services, Mary Ann speaking. Hey, Mary Ann. How about we talk about that new uh, low percentage rate? Tonight on TMI, Trump's wall gets windows, movie pass gets creepy, and the Sarah Jessica Parker Kim Cattrall feud gets explained with music by Hart Hyden and our special guest Ben Weber. Tonight on TMI. Okay, what stories do you guys have for me this week? Ben, before we start, I just want to say your work really inspires me. Oh. The, the performance you gave as one of the cavemen in those Geico commercials just chills. I just ran right out and got car insurance. Um, well, hey, I have car insurance too. Oh, it's because of Ben's amazing performance as a Geico caveman. No, I have no idea what that is. I was just told that if I didn't have car insurance, I would be arrested and Look at me, I wouldn't last a day in the slammer. Yeah, jail changes a man, Marcella. Were you in jail, Austin? No, but uh, I was watching HBO this one time and uh, I saw that Oz was coming on next and I was like, oh my God, no way, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna watch it. And uh, well, long story short, uh, it wasn't anything having to do with the magic land of Oz. It was just men showering in prison rape. Hmm. Men showering and prison rape. I'm intrigued. It's not nearly as interesting as it sounds, Emily. If you say so. Okay, wait. How do we get from Geico Caveman to prison rape? Yeah, isn't it a natural natural progression, Ben? No. <laughs> okay. All right. The script here has gotten way off track. I'm sorry. There's a script. <laughs> Shocking, right? No. The point is that. Ben made a beautiful piece of art with his performance as a Geico caveman, and so I went out and I got car insurance, and then I cried. Wow, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that Geico will be really psyched that my commercial got them a customer. Actually, I didn't get the insurance from Geico, I got it from State Farm, because I like the way the words state and farm don't go together. It's like, states can't be farms, farms can't be states. I'm a sucker for incongruity. 
Okay, yeah, maybe we should start the show. Why would we ruin a good thing by doing that? Well, um, anyways, okay, so uh, what stories do people have? This is us just wrapped their season finale on Tuesday. Okay. Yeah, I know. What's up? Oh, Jesus, Austin, did that show really get you that bad? No, I'm just rehearsing for a Crohn's disease commercial I'm coming up for. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, pretty good, right? Yeah, you're gonna kill it. Yeah, speaking of sad, the on again, off again Justin Bieber Selena Gomez is apparently off. I guess they broke up this week? Well, I hope it's not too late for Biebs to say he's sorry, eh? which is apparently some of the lyrics from one of his songs. It is, Matt. It is. Nailed it! Is it too late to say sorry? And thank you for tuning in to KSN News at 6. I'm Amanda Nazario. And I'm Brent Bollinger. Tonight we have a lot of stories lined up for you, including the results of the Pontiac County Water Commissioner election. We also have a new law that holds Chinese restaurants liable for promises sold in fortune cookies. <laughs> and Brent, I know you'll be sad to hear this, but it looks like Selena Gomez and Justin Bieber are taking a break again. Boy, that smashes my heart into a million little pieces, Amanda. <laughs> oh, but first, before we get to all that, let's hear from our meteorologist, Rick Plotkin, who has a story about a nasty storm that's a broken. Rick? I'm sorry. Did you say Selena and Justin broke up again? <laughs> yes, I'm sorry, Rick. I know you were rooting for them. <laughs> I really was. I thought they made a great couple. And I thought you made a great meteorologist. Now how about that weather, Rick? <laughs> uh, well, yeah, there's a massive storm that's going to kill us all, but don't make a beaver. Man, that's a real bummer. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, Rick. Uh, what were you saying about the storm? Uh, well, yeah, as you can clearly see, there's a high-pressure front over here, a low-pressure front over here. We're right in the middle, and the most two collide. <laughs> Silence. Devastation. But, speaking of high pressure, do you think that Selena was pressuring Justin to put a ring on it, and that's why they broke up? Uh, Rick, <laughs> if we could just put aside, just for a moment, the whole Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez situation, I'm sure some of our viewers that are in the wake of this storm would like to hear what potential damage they could suffer. <laughs> well, suffice it to say, everyone should be at home right now holding their loved ones for the very last time. <laughs> Just like <laughs> Justin and Selena should be holding each other. Okay, Rick, please. <laughs> we really need to get the story on this storm. What precautions do we need to be taking? Well, I'd say if you've ever wanted to go skydiving, you've got about three hours to take. It's going to be 600 mile per hour winds make takeoff impossible. 600 miles per Well, okay. This must be some sort of joke. <laughs> Rick, tell us you're joking. Oh, I wish I could, Brent, but it's pretty clear that this storm's going to rip apart the very fabric of our society. It's going to sweep the earth clean of the pestilence known as mankind. In fact, I'm fairly certain this is the rapture foretold by the book of Revelations. Not that any of that matters, because Justin and Selena can't make it work. What's it all for, am I right? Rick, please, just give us the story on the storm, okay? What is happening with this storm? What's not happening, Amanda? The only way it could get worse is if an earthquake happened in the middle of it and dinosaurs started crawling out of the cracks and eating people, at which point Selena might as well get back with the weekend. It's that bad. Don't do it, Selena! He's no Justin! Okay, Rick. <laughs> Why don't we give you a minute to collect yourself, and in the meantime, let's throw it on over to sports with the adorable Kelly Bass. Kelly? I don't know about a storm brewing on the outside, but I do know about one brewing in the NCAA tournament, and it's called UMBC. What a wonderful story that is. Actually, we don't have time for sports today. We need to get the real story on this storm. I can tell you that Rick is 100% wrong on this one. He is? Yes. Selena Gomez, she can do so much better than Justin Bieber. In the basketball tournament of love, Justin Bieber's Cal State Fullerton, and well, Selena deserves at least a number three seed. I could really see her with someone like Purdue. <laughs> well, you're dead wrong, Kelly, because nothing can defeat Jelena. What is a Jelena? The celebrity power couple name I've given to Justin and Selena. <laughs> it's also what I've named the storm, since it's the only thing I've ever seen that's as powerful as their love. 
Okay. Well, it's devastating if they're breakup. Okay. Yes, I think we're going to go to commercial, but yes. I'm sorry, viewers. When we come back, we will get you the real story on this storm. No! Do not go to commercial. Excuse you, sir. We are live on the air. I know. I'm the assistant weatherman. I would be the actual weatherman, but I'm not attractive enough to be on camera. <laughs> I also do not share Rick's overly optimistic view on Justin and Salada's relationship. I think they have a lot of maturing to do. But what Rick says about the storm is true, it's unsurvivable. Okay, how can that be? Well, let me preface this by saying that I'm a man of science, not prone to any superstition. But a storm this big is clearly an act of a vengeful God, angry at humanity for some trespass. I would suggest that viewers make peace with this deity and those they have wronged. You know, I, I have to apologize. I've let my obsession with Justin and Selena take over. Perhaps Jelena, the couple, is God's metaphor for Jelena, the storm, in that my obsession with them has torn apart my life in the same way that this storm will tear apart all life within a 40-mile radius. There's really only one thing to do in this situation. Shelter in a basement? <laughs> Brent. I'm gonna miss you most of all. <laughs> no, I'm gonna go with my skydiving idea, but I'm gonna jump out right as the storm front hits and die in battle with nature like Viking meteorologists of old to assure admittance into glorious Valhalla! I don't think Vikings had skydiving meteorologists. I'm right? sorry, do you have a certification from the American Meteorological Society? <laughs> I thought not. Let's roll, Willie. Sure. In Valhalla weather, man, no one is too ugly to present the news. <laughs> We have to go to a commercial, folks, but if any of us are still alive when we get back from the break, we've got a heartwarming story about a local squirrel who just can't get enough peanut butter. <laughs> I want to go to Mahala! For all the stories you tried to miss, I'm Michelle Halterman. And I'm Marcella Mastrangelo, and this is the TMI Minute. Rumors are swirling that Kanye West is making a new album in Wyoming. Either that, or he's just picking the name of his next kid. I just told you who I thought I was. A guy! Speaking of rumors, Kendall Jenner had to deny a report that claimed that she's gay. Clearly this can't be true, because we're not in a TV sweeps month. George Lucas's LA Museum broke ground on construction with a planned completion date in 2021. Considering Lucas's history, the museum will probably be renovated in 2031, upsetting all of the fans of the original building. I got a bad feeling about this. Pro wrestling company World Wrestling Entertainment plans to put Kid Rock into its Hall of Fame. Might as well, since the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame certainly isn't going to put him in theirs. Donald Trump Jr. and his wife Vanessa are getting divorced after 13 years of marriage. Before any of you porn stars get too excited, remember, you only get 130000 if you have the affair with him while he's married, not after. Lie, lie, lie. What a story breaks in Hollywood. We'll be there with the crazy glue. Honey, hurry up. This Is Us is going to start any minute. I don't want you to miss any of it because then I have to catch you up. Sorry, honey. Just grabbing some Kleenex and my lithium, just in case. Yeah. Popcorn? Ooh. Oh, shh. Adam Levine looks sad. I think the voice is ending. You're watching NBC, America's third favorite network. And hey, three out of five ain't so shabby. And now, a new episode of Rise. Uh, Rise? What? Maybe they made a mistake. No, that is Rise. Are you sure it's Tuesday? I'm pretty sure. Are you sure this is NBC? They just said it was. But maybe they said MBC, you know, with an M. Hold on, let me rewind it in my head. You're watching MBC. Honey, this could be MBC, not NBC. No, 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 there's no such thing as MBC. Look, there has to be a perfectly good explanation for this. Maybe This Is Us just took a week off. Well, check on your phone, oh, because right. news like that would obviously okay. be everywhere. Okay, oh, here's an article. This Is Us secures time spot, but is down from last year's finale. F finale well, What the hell does that mean? I think this means that This Is Us is done. Until September. No! no! Why? <laughs> what happened to you? You sit down, 
to watch the show that has provided your emotional compass only to find out that it's going to be on hiatus for almost six months? Yes. yes. If the answer is yes, I'm here to tell you that you are not alone, which is why we have founded Without Us, a service for those suffering from This Is Us withdrawal. Excuse me, miss, how did you get in our house? Without Us understands how much This Is Us means to you and has created an hour of heart-wrenching empathy for you to watch once a week, just like your favorite show. Um, is it on TV? No but it can be in front of your TV. Huh? I'll get it. What? <laughs> Richard and Jessica, meet Ralphie and Clara from Without Us. Um, are we gonna let one stranger let more strangers into our house, Richard? Well, what else are we supposed to do? We have nothing to watch on TV, for Christ's sake. Richard, yeah, that's right. That's right. I've just been diagnosed with terminal brain disease. <sighs> Ralphie was diagnosed after the birth of our child. Oh dear! I was getting these splitting headaches, and I tried everything to stop them. Aspirin, Tylenol, Ibuprofen, nothing helped. He tried everything except going to the doctor! <laughs> Men can be such babies when it comes to taking care of themselves. Am I right, Jessica? Yes, Richard is the same way. Which reminds me, we really have to schedule your annual physical. I'll get to it. Don't let it wait, buddy. I thought I just needed glasses, but I guess the man upstairs had other plans. <laughs> By hiring without us, you'll no longer feel the devoid of emotions all of spring and summer. No, with without us, we guarantee to provide you the same pain and sorrow you'll feel each week until September. So I said to the doctor, sorry my wife being so silly dragging me all the way down here. I just need glasses, right? But then his face got real serious and sad at the same time. And he said, I'm sorry, Ralphie, you have terminal brain disease. <laughs> the doctor was Indian. He said, if only we had detected it sooner, there might have been hope. But at least I got to see my little guy come into the world. <laughs> look, look at Ralphie Jr. and how much he looks like his father. <laughs> <laughs> it's too bad he won't have any memories of his father. He won't. I'm going to make a scrapbook of my life, and I'm going to record some video lessons for him to teach him how to be a man, since I won't be there to do it in person. <laughs> Lesson number one, don't put off going to the doctor. Don't do it. Because of without us, you will no longer find yourself saying things like, maybe I'll burn this cigarette butt in my arm just so I can feel something in July. Or... Something like, oh hey, I wonder what cutting is about. No, with without us, you will get all those human emotions just enough, long enough to last you till the next season rolls around. My darling, you're too young to spend your life alone. Once I'm gone, I want you to go and find somebody who'll treat you right. I won't be mad. Oh, Ralphie! Oh, oh, no matter what! You'll always be the love of my life. No other man can ever take that away from me! We'll be together again one day, baby. Wait for me in heaven! I will! <laughs> this is great! I can't agree more. Thank, Thank you, you without, without us. us. Without us. We can't replace this is us, but we sure can put you in tears. I remember the day I lost my sight in the fire. Um, Henry, I think you got your schedule mixed up because this is um, Ralphie and Clara's week. You're on next week. You were oh, supposed to come. I'm sorry. I must not have realized because I'm blind due to the fire. <laughs> <laughs>
Disney's Wrinkle in Time had a really disappointing box office opening. With an estimated $150 million budget and only a $33 million first weekend box office, I'm pretty sure Disney's going to have Oprah go into their office and say to a few of the executives, you lost your job, and you lost your job, everyone lost their job. Yeah, you're probably right. Oh, speaking of almost losing your job this week, the CEO of MoviePass, Mitch Lowe, he had to dispute a claim that says that the MoviePass app tracks its users' locations at all times. That way to better suggest movies to their customers. Hey, $9 a month to see as many movies as I want? For that, I let them track me into the shower. <laughs> that's true, that's true, yeah. <laughs> It's what Dr. Phil calls keeping the love fresh. <laughs> so, what do you want to do next? I mean, we could go for a long walk on the beach, we'd go to a bar, or we could go back home for some hanky panky. <laughs> I don't know. Let me think about it. You know what I really enjoyed? This delicious dinner? No. Eli Roth's remake of Death Wish with Bruce Willis. Do tell! Okay, I will. With visionary director Eli Roth and star power like Bruce Willis, this was one Death Wish I sure was hoping came true. But hasn't it been getting very poor reviews? Oh sure, but what do critics know anyway? I mean, they're the same people that said Justin Bieber wouldn't amount to the artistic amazingness he is today. That is so true. Despacito, am I right? You sure are. Honey, how about we catch a movie? Hmm. Yeah, all right. Movie sounds good. You know what? We could finally see The Shape of Water. No, I was thinking about going to see Death Wish. Death Wish? But isn't that supposed to be horrible? I've heard good things. Mm, well, I'm sorry, but when Die Hard 5 failed to come through on the promise of Die Hard 4, that Bruce Willis lost a little, little bit of luster in my eyes. <laughs> okay, we get it. You know what else is a great film? Gringo, starring Charlize Theron. Joel Edgerton and that David guy with the last name from Africa that I can never pronounce. Wow, yeah, I heard terrible things, but I don't trust any of those people that say those terrible things. Oh, me either. And I say yes to Gringo. It's a great film, as long as you adjust your idea of the word great. Have you heard anything about Gringo? It's getting a lot of bucks. You know, I haven't really heard anything, but then again, who am I to hear about Buzz? <laughs> I think we should go see it. Well, if you think we should. Well, I am hearing great things. Oh, I heard the words great things? You folks must be talking about Eli Roth's <laughs> new movie, Death Wish. <coughs> I mean, Gringo, a movie so great, you'll be asking yourself how everyone in the world could be so wrong. Wow, that is amazing. We were actually just talking about Gringo. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Oh. Yes, I mean, it is getting a lot of buzz. Oh, well, bzz, bzz, it's that good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's it. I'm sold. Uh, I don't know. I'm still kind of on the fence. You know, I just typically don't like films where the title is not in English, and I'm pretty sure Gringo is French. <laughs> <laughs> well, that may be true, but the movie is all American. So I, can I bring you folks your check so you can catch the 815 at the Regal on Sunset? No. You know what? I'm in the mood for pie. I want pie. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? Because you can still catch that 815 of Gringo. Yeah, I'm sure. Bring me one piece of pecan pie. <laughs> <laughs> you say so. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> pie. <laughs> It's okay, honey. If you don't want to see that movie, we can go do something else. I'm just not 100% sold yet. <laughs> Who could that be? <laughs> Hello? Listen to me. You're going to the 815 showing of Gringo at the Regal on Sunset. Or, duh, we're wiping out everyone you love. Wow, that escalated quickly. That is how we roll. But I just ordered a piece of pecan pie. We canceled the pie. Now go to the movie. It's so much better than everyone's saying. 
as long as you expect very little. Um, honey, I think maybe we actually should go and see that film. But what about your pie? Forget the pie. I can skip the pie. No, sir. Don't skip your pie. Paul, what are you doing? Clearly this man is in a hurry to go see the 815 showing of Gringo, which is playing in Theater 3 at the Regal on Sunset. Yeah, maybe you should mind your own business, sir. No. These people have clearly made up their minds about the Gringo. No, I am done with this sham. What is going on around here? Be careful what you say. I am done doing the bidding of those monsters at Movie Pass. Movie Pass? Yes, Movie Pass. We were all hired to track you and find out everything we could about you, your hopes and dreams, what makes you happy, what makes you sad, just so we could give you better options at the cinema. So you guys have been tracking us? Night and day. So I'm not crazy. You were watching me shower through the bathroom window last night. What? No. That's actually, gross. Actually, guy, uh, that was me. I didn't know. Kevin, we weren't ordered to observe a showering habit. I mean, a man has to have fun somehow, am I right? Yeah. You guys did all of this just to get us to go see Gringo? No, it's not just Gringo. It's every movie you will ever want to see for the rest of your life. Movie Pass just wants to be there for you, for all of your cinematic needs. We want to be here for you. Wait, so we don't have to actually go and see the movie if we don't want to, of, right? Of course not, of course not. But based on the work we do, you're going to regret it if you don't. Oh my God. Especially if we don't call the home office and tell them not to go through with the whole, you know, wiping out the whole family thing. You're you're not really going to do that, are you? No, 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 no. Gringo doesn't have a budget for that sort of action. But let me just say, yes, you will be seeing the new Spielberg film next week. Uh, sure, if you say so. We do. We really do. Oh, my God. Okay, you know what? I think we're going to get going. <laughs> yes. Oh, to go see Gringo. No, you know what? It's been kind of a crazy evening, and I'm a little bit tired. The lady's a little tired. I think I'm gonna go take a shower and hit the hay. A shower, eh? Yeah? You, yeah? <laughs> sorry, sorry. We are allowed to leave, right? Of course. I just wanted to personally apologize for this intrusion of your privacy. So now go! Go live your lives! It, it's fine, really. I mean... We do have trouble picking out movies, and we are paying that $9 a month. <laughs> you are. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes okay, are. so for realsies, we're going to go. <laughs> hey, see you later, hot stuff. <laughs> nah, just kidding. Nah, get out of here. Get out of here. Come on, honey. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. I'm, I'm really sorry I freaked out like that. It's just this job, you know, it just gets to you sometimes, you know? Sure. Yeah, of course. It had to be done. Yes. Yeah. 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 Welcome to Disney's corporate offices. The chairman will be with you shortly. Why do you think Bob Iger wants to see us? You know why he asked us here. Maybe he didn't notice that a mere wrinkle in time did so bad, considering how great Black Panther is doing for the studio. Uh. I doubt the chairman of Disney didn't notice that his movie was a huge flop. <sighs> You're double wrong, sweetheart. The chairman did notice, but it's not Iger. It's me! <laughs> the one in charge! Is that? It couldn't be. Walt Disney's head? Oh, ta-da! You got it right, young man. You're promoted to the head of the class. Pardon the pun. Also, no promotion. Uh, I mean, I heard stories about... A cryogenically frozen human head, now thawed and functioning independently on a cake plate? Yeah, something like that. Well, darling, I'll tell you the same thing I once told a young, very Randy Joan Fontaine. Sometimes hearing is believing. And believe me, you're going to hear me giving it to you like a dog! Carrots! I need some carrots over here! Carrots! I got my carrots! Um, okay. Hmm. You look a bit like Fontaine. Tell me, when's the last time you got a little head? Oh, wait, no. Strike that. All this me too malarkey, last thing I need is get thrown out on my uh, uh, <coughs> head. <coughs> I tell you, there's no place for a disgraced head these days. 
Okay, um, so, uh, Walt, you called us in here. Oh, wait, hold on. What did you just call me? Walt? You know who calls me Walt? Mrs. Disney and my brother Roy, and I have them both killed. Uh, <clears throat> they passed away. <laughs> you can call me Mr. Walt Disney's head, or Mr. Disney's head, or just the head. I know how much you kids like abbreviating things these days. LOL, OMG, WMT, carrots! I need some more carrots over here! Ah, oh, yes. Uh, WMT? Hmm? Oh, yes. WMT, work my taint. It's a thing. Actually, I made that one up. It hasn't quite caught on the way I thought it might. <laughs> Speaking of things that haven't caught on, which one of you three putts has thought greenlighting a $150 million Oprah movie for kids was a good idea? Ugh. Oh, it's you? Well, boy, you better tell me what was going through your head before I chew it right off! Well, we know how big Oprah is all around the world, and, and she liked the project, and she was available. Let me just stop you right there. This reminds me of a time a young post-pubescent Judy Garland came into my office, sans underpants. She wanted to show old Walt what a big girl she was, so she could get all the big girl parts. But I had to tell her, Judy, honey, just because you've got it don't mean anyone wants to see it. Mr. Disney's head, we, we still feel that with a lack of better options for families, you know, within over a month, a wrinkle of time, might still have legs. Oh, it's got legs? If I had hands and arms, I'd be pointing at absolutely nothing, because I've got no legs, and neither does that clunker. I'll tell you, in my day, you lost 50 grand on a picture, we take you out back to the farm, slather you in butter, and let the pigs go to town. You lost a hundred million dollars. What should I be feeding you to? I, I don't think there's any need to feed us to any animals. I'm sure one of the other projects we've greenlit will do big numbers and make up for the loss on this one. Oh, you think one thing will make up for the other, do you? Yes. Well, that reminds me of a time I spent with a, a lost weekend with Fred Astaire, Dick Powell, and Gene Arthur. Gene was raring to go, but then her Aunt Flo came to town, and everyone bought for the stare. A lot of people think Fred was a, you know, a little light in the loafers because of the dancing, but let me tell you, that man was a grade A clam hound. <laughs> so Dick looked at me and he said to me, he said, Walt, he said to me, he said, Walt, he said, now that Gene's out of commission, we gotta replace her, which we did, but I'll let you in on a little secret. When you've got a hankering for a Gene Arthur and you end up with a common Miranda, it's just not the same thing. Which is exactly how I feel about you telling me this picture will make up for another one. Now get the hell out of my office! I got a hot date with Olivia de Havilland. Sure, she's 101 years old, but... In a few minutes, she's going to be de Havilanding all over my mustache. Carrots! I need some carrots over here! Carrots right away! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, once again, Hart Hyden. I'll be so bad. I'll be. 
second show ever, but the first guest, she didn't even know how to make knots. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can you guys stop liking the cool goat? Yeah, I want to talk to too. Yeah, hi. Uh, hey guys, just in time, I can show you guys how to make a double carrot bend. Don't know what that is, me either. Okay, so this end is going to We want to talk about sex in the city! Uh, you were skipper Miranda's boyfriend on seasons one and two, right? I don't know. It was a long time ago. I'd really just rather show you guys a knot. I don't normally show people my twin Turk's head, but for you guys, I can make an exception. Yeah, okay, let's do it. So you were on sex in the city. Yeah, we called it SATC. Who called it that? People that like to abbreviate. <laughs> okay. So, since you were on SATC, we want to know if you know why Sarah Jessica Parker, SJP, yeah. SJP, and Kim Cattrall don't talk anymore. Yeah, what do you know about their feud? Spill it! Well, I look at it, it was a long time ago. I was only on the show for a little while, and I barely knew those guys. Okay. Bye. Okay, twist wire, twist wire. Come back, come back. Come back. Wait, so you actually know something about the feud? Yeah, spill it, spill it. I know something about the feud. I'm the reason they're having a feud. Why? <laughs> it was the summer of 1999. Clinton was in the White House, 
Susan Lucci had just won her first Emmy, and you couldn't go anywhere without hearing Mambo Number no. 5. <laughs> I was just a 27-year-old kid playing a young, sexy web designer, Skipper Johnson, on SATC. The world was my oyster. Plus, as long as I was on the show, I could get HBO for free. But only regular HBO, not HBO 2 or HBO Zone. I had some friends over to watch Todd McFarlane's Spawn, which was in its third season on HBO. But little did I know, that night was going to spawn a dark and ugly feud between two of America's sweethearts. Hey, you can't watch Spawn without some chips. Here you go. Hey, you can't watch Spawn without some chips. Here you go. Hey, you can't watch Spawn without some chips. Here you go. Hey, you can't watch Spawn because it's on HBO and I get it for free. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, then I wish you had USA Network. Tonight is the series finale of Silk Stockings. Wow. I cannot imagine what a world without Silk Stockings is going to be like. Yeah, that's like imagining a world where George Bush Jr. is president. I mean, <laughs> it could happen. I just don't want to think yeah. about it. Yeah. yeah, right. George Bush Jr. being president. <laughs> okay, what's next? Are we, are we going to have a black guy or that idiot Donald Trump? <laughs> possible in a world that no longer has silk stockings. All right, look, I don't have silk stockings, but I do have uh, Todd McFarlane's Spawn, mm -hmm. which we are going to watch. Okay. Uh, uh, hang on. Um, let me get this. <clears throat> Hello, Weber residents. This is Ben. Sarah Jessica Parker. You what? You're going to a corn concert? Well, I guess it is 1999, and they're really huge right now. <laughs> You have an extra ticket and you want me to go? Uh, hang on one second. Oh my god, okay guys, you know that show that I'm on? The one with the horny women? Yes. Sex in the City, right? S-A-T-C. Who calls it that? Okay, we already made this joke. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyways, that's Sarah Jessica Parker and she wants to go with me and some of her friends to a corn concert. <gasps> oh, dude! Corn is really huge in 1999. Yeah, they really are. <laughs> you gotta go. Right, but I mean, what about you guys? I don't want to abandon you guys, my oh, gods. Ben, Ben, Ben. If I had a choice between us and corn, I'd choose corn every time. Yeah, I mean, totally. It's 1999. Go, man. Just go. All right, all right, okay. I'll call her. I'll, I'll tell her I can go. Um, hey, Sarah Jessica Parker. Yeah, I can go with your husband to the corn concert. Meet you outside of Radio City Music Hall in 45 minutes? I'll be there. Whew. Okay, so not only is she going, but her husband, the star of Ferris Bueller's Day Off, Matthew Broderick, is also going to be there. Whoa. Oh my god. Dude, that is awesome. I man. know. This is going to be a great night. Yeah. Oh. Huh, oh, maybe she up. forgot. Maybe she forgot to tell me something. Maybe Ferris's sister, Jennifer Gray, is going to go too. Oh. Hello? <laughs> Oh, hey, Kim, how are you? What's that? Wait a minute, I heard getting tickets to a sneak preview of the Blair Witch Project movie were super hard to come by. Oh my god, that's great. Wait, you have an extra ticket for me? Okay, hold on for one second. Oh my god, you guys, that is the other woman on the show. Oh, the one with the red hair? No. Oh, the one from Porky's. Yes, yeah. Kim Cattrall, yes. Oh my god. She wants to go to the Blair Witch Project with me. The Blair? That looks crazy as hell. Wow, it has, it has actual found footage in there. Huh? You have to go. Okay, but what about Sarah Jessica Parker's corn concert? No, 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 no. Ben, you've got to go to this thing, okay? This Blair Witch thing is going to be totally tubular, man. <sighs> all right, all right, all right. Uh, okay, so I'll just call her. Uh, okay, hey, uh, yes, I'm in. Um, I can meet you at the Angelica in 15 minutes. I'll be there. Okay. Okay. Now I just have to call Sarah Jessica Parker. I just have to beep her and break her the news. But anyway, long story short, by the time uh, Sarah Jessica Parker, I paged her by the time she was able to find a payphone and call me back, it was too late to make it to either place, and I had to blow them both off. Yeah, and then I got, I got written off of Sex in the City, and then years later, SJP and Kim... Well, they found out about it, and the rest is history. Yeah. Oh, this sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys like eating a lot of cherry, though, right? 
Oh, they were is, a big band. Yeah. Is that a Ben and Jerry flavor? I'm only eating Halo Top right now. Yeah. Um, so listen, let me show you that twin Turks set. <laughs> bye bye. bye. Blow your mind. <laughs> Stories, guys. Well, uh, spring training is in full effect, and this year the Angels actually have a shot at contending because they picked up Japanese slugger and pitcher Otani. Oh, but do not forget, they also have the perennial MVP candidate Mike Trout as well. That's true, and there isn't anything that Mike Trout can't do. I mean, besides, you know, win a World Series. But other than that, he can do anything. Well, Donald Trump visited Southern California to view prototypes for the new border wall. Prototypes? It's a wall. How hard can it be? Well, he does say he wants a window in it so that we'll be able to see through it. Oh, so we can see what it's like to have a country with a president who's not a jackass. <sighs> Tus caricias, los momentos, no puedo dejar. ¡Ay! ¡Oh, my God! ¡Gringos! ¡Ay, ay, ay! ¡Sergio! ¡Sergio! ¡Ay, María! ¿Qué pasa? ¿Qué es wrong? ¿Qué es wrong? The gringos, they're looking at me again from the window in the wall. ¡Hijo de puta! ¡Get out of here, permitido! ¡Ay! ¡Take your shirt off! ¡Ay, yeah, you're one of you! ¡Pervertidos! ¡Hey! I have no idea what the hell you just said. Well, we're on our side of this here wall, so we can stay here as long as we like. Yeah, President <laughs> Trump said so. So why don't you hang up them clothes nice and slow like? <laughs> Are you having trouble with gringos staring at you through the wall, Ventana? I can help. Ay, ay, it's, it's Juan Carlos. Juan Carlos from We're All for the Derecho Chico. Yes. What, what is that? It's on the Netflix. Oh, the Netflix. Uh, don't let culo payaso window wall trouble you. Trump is nothing to us. Use these hermosa curtains. Oh, wow, they're so beautiful. Hey, who's the new guy? Oh, Callate puto! Man. Just take this and throw it over the wall. <laughs> now they can no longer see you. <laughs> oh, perfect. Perfecto, I want Carlos to my hero. Please, please. Think nothing of it, mis amigos. Yes, yes, okay. Now, if you don't mind, I have to go make 3,731 more windows just like this. Fabulous. Oh, finally, some privacy. Aye. <laughs> hey, mi amor. Quieres, uh, you want to play hide the burrito? <laughs> taquito, honey. Hide the taquito. <laughs> you know, it's not about the barco. It's about el movimiento del océano. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell are we supposed to do now? Uh, well, we'll want to go buy some beer and automatic weapons because we can. Yeah, good. All right. One more time. Heart hiding, everybody. Oh, no.
Swing for the fences? But she says she's more comfortable going station to station. Lame. How far do you get? A lot of singles, couple doubles. Hmm, decent. Now, Jeff, when you discussed this with your girlfriend, what were her thoughts on the subject? She's kind of chill where we're at right now. Hmm, but you're not? No, I'm ready to go deep. Uh, <laughs> now, Jeff, I think in every relationship, it's important that, you know, both parties are on the same wavelength. Blah, blah, blah. Yo, Hanks, remember that one scene in Bachelor Party where your bro was trying to hook you up with that super hot redhead? Yep. Mm. You know, that movie was, uh, to be honest, a really long time ago. What are you talking about? I seen it on Skinamax like two nights ago. <laughs> okay. Anyway, so you were like, bro, I can't hook up with this hot redhead because my old lady will get super heated. And then you like didn't do it and you bailed. You're like, bro, I'm out, huh? Um, I, I guess that may have happened, yeah. Yeah, well, you know you should have totally gone for it. Am I right, Jeff? Yeah. Yeah, dude! Uh, you know, Mike, I think you're misunderstanding the situation. Had Tom gone for it in that scene from Bachelor Party, it would have been a consensual situation because he and the redhead would have discussed it and agreed to this. You know, I've done a lot of other movies since Bachelor Party. I've won two Oscars. Jeff, are you still listening? Yo! I think what my dude Hanks is trying to say is that the next time you're in the sheets with your lady, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you don't hit it out of the park, there's no shame in sending one out to the warning track. <laughs> cool! Uh, Mike, I think this is really bad advice to be giving to your listeners. Next caller! Who's in the box? Hey, Mike. This is Alice from Gardendale. You have a bad connection, Alice. Uh, hi, Mike. Is Alice in there? Oh, what up, Alice? <laughs> what are you bringing to the dish? Uh, 20, back left, throw right. Cool. What's going on with your dude? Mike, yeah, I love my boyfriend and all, but he's got a low on base percentage. Mmm, how far you got? Singles here and there, mostly dribblers up the middle. Mm, that suck. That sucks. <laughs> dude, I think you may need to bring in a pinch hitter. Uh, I, I know he likes to be more disciplined at the plate, but uh, he's got a hitch in his swing. But, and won't that affect our team chemistry? Look, you may just need to send this dude down to the miners where he can work on his mechanics. If that doesn't fix it, well, then you may need to move the whole organization in a brand new direction. Okay, so you're saying that I should consider a change at the top of the lineup. Gotta shake things up, Rosephine. Yeah. My wife, Rita, and I have been married for over 30 years, and I gotta say, we've learned that if we've got issues, we just talk it out. Oh, you mean like how you tried to talk things out with that dude, Cole, who was trying to get with your lady in the film Bachelor Party? <laughs> but then, like, in the end, you stole his car and tied him up butt naked? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I've done a lot of other movies since Bachelor Party. Like, I'm in uh, The Post, which is out now with Meryl Streep. Okay, good for you. <laughs> Anyways, Alice, you still there? Yeah. All right, what up, chick? Listen, here's what you gotta do. Send that dude down to the minors. He's gotta sit on the bench for a while. Bring some of these other players up to the big leagues, huh? If that doesn't work, designate him for assignment. Cool. Huh. Um, again, Mike, I think this is really bad advice, especially for someone like Alice. You know what? Your stuff is weak tonight. I mean, none of your advice is even in baseball terms. How would anybody understand you? <laughs> Listen, I think we need to make a call to the bullpen. <laughs> Get her out of here, dude. You're out. Thank you. This call to the bullpen is sponsored by Target. We're like Walmart, but not really. And now, coming into the game, a random audience member. What up, random audience member? Huh. You see my dude Hanks in the movie Bachelor Party? Really? That was such a one film in my career. No. 
Uh, I think he said he won like a bunch of Oscars for it or something. <laughs> you should check it out. It's cool. <laughs> I've seen Bachelor Party, Mike. I hope you've seen it better than you've seen friggin' Breaking Balls in Little League, Dad. Wow, Mike, Little League was 20 years ago. Not cool. <laughs> you know what is cool? What? Schooling John Carlos Stanton in the friggin' Home Run Derby. I don't know what that is. Huh? Oh, <clears throat> no. Anyways, I think now is a good time for the seventh inning stretch. Hmm? Mm. Duh, stretch my arm. Too much stretch! Alright, no more stretching, you guys. Now I think it's time for the last legs. <laughs> Who we got in the box? Yo, dude, it's Stan. When did you school me at the Derby Dog? Oh, hey, what up, John Carlos Stanton? Uh huh. Wasn't there that one year dog? <laughs> no, dog. Never happened. Oh, uh, my bad. <laughs> yeah, cool. Cool. You know, I was in A League of Their Own. That, that's actually a baseball movie. <laughs> <laughs> that's our show for tonight, you guys. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for checking out our show. <laughs> oh, man. This is Adam Trout signing off, saying, the next time you're having sex, think about baseball. It works for me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's bring out Kurt Strzok to dance more. <laughs> no, dude, you're up! <laughs> Hollywood will be there with the crazy glue. I'm Stevie Valero for TMI. Good night! Yeah.